Alright, so I'm back here with the new home ship for the 2023 career build series. Did a little bit of work off screen, not too much. Just flick the camera there for you guys get nauseous with me. And so you can see here we have uh, the mast. Did a little bit of work on that, made that look a little bit better. Again, a lot of this is... <laughs> I made the mistake of posting a picture of this on a bunch of the different discords, and I get a bunch of uh, ideas. And so... Uh, you know, this is far from done. This is early days. This is based off a real ship. And so I'm, I'm kind of doing some of the work on it. You know, again, my method is apparently very strange for, for what a lot of people do is I tend to do a, I kind of make boxes. I, I kind of, con I consider it a sculpt in method. That's what I kind of call it. So I think of it like kind of, you know, um, sculpting in marble. I make some really, you know, I, I essentially make blocks of marble, and then I go and I sculpt it in. So I start to cut into it, and that's kind of the method that I like to do. So you'll notice I make things really blocky and huge, and then I trim them, and that's kind of the way I do it. You, you saw, if you watched the earlier episodes, how I, you know, I essentially make these rooms, and they're just, you know, squares, and then I start cutting in facets. And part of it is, is the sh are the shapes in the right places? You know, I see a lot of people, they build everything accurately the way it's supposed to be right off the bat. And it's like, I don't like doing that. I like doing this. And then because I have to convert it from, oh my God, the camera. I have to convert it from reality to the game. And so, you know, because the smallest blocks we can get are a quarter of a meter long, you know, I have to consider that. And so that sort of thing really informs the the building of this is... Since everything has to be a quarter meter at the minimum, I have to really try to, you know, I have to get the sizing and the scaling correct for the actual game to make it work. And so that's a lot of what I end up doing here is converting it to game. You know, and so I by making those big squares, I can say, okay, well, listen, I have a big square here. If I measured it exactly how it would be in real life, you run into an issue where... Okay, the staircase on a real ship is much steeper generally. Again, we're speaking generalities here. And because it's steeper, you uh, you know, you don't need as much space forward and backwards, but you need a lot of, sp you know, you need space. You know, so, for example, in game, you need three wide stairs. Well, IRL, you might be, you, of course, you can put in two wide stairs IRL, right? You can put make a stair as big as you want or as small as you want, you know. Of course, laws dictating legally how big it can be but you know theoretically you can make it as however um, whatever size you want and so we can't do that in game we have to kind of build to you know what the game tells us to do and so you know if I get in there and the, the room is perfectly sized where the real one would be and then it doesn't work in game well what's the point you know and so I kind of have to by doing the squares and then cutting them in it allows me to you know, make it close to where it would be in real life and then convert it to where it would where it needs to be in game to actually function. So that's just kind of why I came up with that methodology. And then also like, you know, this ship is made for research. So, you know, you come out of the wheelhouse here, you go down and then this area there is there, you know, it also extends further on the real ship. I'm not extending this so far. I want to make sure I can put something here if I want. And so there's the captain's quarters here, the the chief engineer's quarters here. And then this is all, I think, like some of the research stuff. Well, I'm not having any research stuff. And then so the staircase is actually back here for the next level on the, um, you know, on the ship that uh, this is based off of or inspired by. And it's also, you know, I like to use the term inspired by because that's what it is. I'm not I'm not replicating something precisely. I am. Ins it's inspired by a specific. A specific ship and so I think that functions better as well to have inspired by stuff because again I'm not I'm not interested in having a research ship what I'm interested in is having a you know having a home ship and so I'm converting it from what it was innately designed to be to something else entirely all right so I'm going to copy this if I can just get a staircase in over here I'm going to be thrilled so where I think I'm going to put the staircase, again, I'm taking liberties with this wherever I want. So I could put it here, I think, and keep the walk path a little bit less strained, I think. 
So let's see where that goes underneath. So that is right here at this wall. So that's fine. I can move this wall. That wall doesn't need to be there. My next staircase here. Let's put that there. So I like to get these types of things like staircases in early. It allows me, you know, it's a big element of having to spatially get the ship right, make sure everything's going to work in there correctly, make sure I can reach all the levels. That's not something I want to do late. I want to get that in early. I want to get that set up so that if I do need to change it, I can change it early enough. You know, it's like if I started getting decorated and then I have to try to move some, some of that stuff around, that's annoying. See, this is why I don't like the bucket. See how that painted the inside of that block black? Well, now that it has to render that color. And so it's prime example for lag and whatnot, and it's um, it's not the best. What are you? Okay, so this is the extent here. So this will go into narrow room that we'll take on. So like, let me make it. I'll make an exec. If I could speak English, I will make an executive. Oh my God, dude, I can't speak. I'm trying to make a video here, I can't speak. I will make an executive. <laughs> I'm gonna go mad here. I'm gonna make an executive decision. Yeah, if I say it angry, it, it comes right out. <laughs> oh, what's that say about me? Uh, yeah, so right there. Uh, so this is going to be void, and then this is going to be room, and then the rest of the bow is void. The bow, again, this um, the wedges don't give me enough buoyancy in game. That is a that is an issue with buoyancy in game. Now, I can get frustrated about it, or I can build within the constraints of the world that we live in here. The world we live in is not Earth. It is Stormworks. And so instead of getting annoyed by it, I'm just going to build within the constraints of the world that I live in, which is here. And so I'm in, you know, can't I can't control the design of this game, but I can control my reaction to what what I can do in game. And that's what I choose to do is have fun. So I'm not going to get annoyed by these things and it was um you know, like I posted, I used a glitch for buoyancy in one of my builds and you know, I talk about you know what, if you're playing in a multiplayer environment where you could be disadvantaging somebody else, yeah, that is cheating, quote unquote cheating, but guess what? I'm playing by myself, and I'm going to build it how I want to make sure that I have fun and to cut down my frustration. And the whole point of this game is to have fun. So guess what, man? If a glitch is going to make you have a better time, do it. It's you know it's one of the reasons why I talk about, you know, one of the first things I recommend, and I do it pretty much at the beginning of every career build series, is I put in the creative menu. And part of it is for my for me recording stuff, you know, I need to be able to go in a third person. I want to show you, hey, this is my guess where we are. This is where we really are. So I need the creative menu stuff. And I still have all the constraints of a career game. But for example, like, you know, let's say I traverse for an hour and I forget a fire extinguisher because on one of the versions of my ship, I put it in there. But I the one I saved, I forgot to put it in there. That's peak frustration territory. You could get all sorts of annoyed. You say, oh, I just wasted an hour. I just took my ship over there. I have no way to put out the fire. This is so annoying. Or, you know what I could do? I could teleport back, grab a fire extinguisher, teleport back to my ship, and not complain. And have a great time. And so, that's one of the reasons why I advocate for those little things. Is You know what? It's your game. It's a sandbox game. And, you know, people who are anti-XML editing... I, I, you know, to a certain very small extent, I get their point. But at the end of the day, it's your game. You're playing it, and you want to enjoy it. Do what you want to do to enjoy it. You know, I could complain about the buoyancy isn't 100% accurate all day, or I could do a couple little uh, things to make the buoyancy work better. And I choose to do those couple little things and not um, get frustrated. And that's just the that's just my personal choice as to make sure that I'm not getting annoyed. And not get frustrated by the game. At the end of the day, I want to have fun playing this game. I don't want to get frustrated. All right, so I'm going to work on buoyancy and ballast a little bit. So we don't we have copious amounts of fuel, and so I do not need really as much fuel as I have. Oh my God, the camera! The camera is frustrating me though. I will freely admit that that is being frustrating. So what I want to do is I'm putting a wall in here. I can see which side I'm on. So that's the that's definitely stern. All right. So I wanna I'm gonna put a wall across here. I'm gonna greatly reduce ballast and fuel, at least fuel. And so 
I'm doing this to try to get this ship to make sure I, I'm trying to avoid glitching if I if I don't have to, but if I have to, like I said, I'm going to do it. And so what I'm doing is I'm getting some of the fuel out of the bow. There was a little bit in the bow. See how it's rolling now? We're having, um, I need to get that center of gravity lower is, is kind of the, you know, one thought I had is to do the glitch and to drag this center um, and add a bunch of weight to drag the CG down. The other thing is I think my water line is still too low. I'm going to do another thing. I want to get the water line up more. We'll bring the water line up one more. And so a thought is I might, I may still do the glitch. We'll see. Again, I have to put in so, there's so much stuff that's going in here. And so that's one of the benefits of having the ability to do a glitch. Like people have, we've been asking for like, or I've been asking, I won't speak for other people, but I've seen them ask for it. So, but there have been people, myself included, who have asked for things like foam blocks or buoyancy blocks. And so part of that is the desire to be able to increase one's buoyancy. And so essentially you put in a, a buoyancy or foam block and the foam block, of course, listen, in real life, foam has less buoyancy than just air. All right. Uh, the, the benefit of the, of the foam is generally it's some sort of, um, I don't know if it's polyethylene, but it's some sort of um, hydrocarbon that, you know, is repellent to water, so you can put it in the hull of a ship or a boat, like a Boston Whaler, and the air bubbles can't be reached by the water, so instead of having a void of air that, if it gets pierced, will now be full of water and bringing down a Davy Jones locker, you can have a bunch of foam, and if it's breached, the foam is unlikely to get waterlogged. The, those air bubbles will tend to be safe from water intrusion, and so you're going to have floating. So what they could do is essentially puts, give a foam block. It would be fakey, but, you know, um, have a foam block that's that has positive buoyancy in it. And so you could fill your hollows with that foam block, and it would actually give you more buoyancy. And it would be a great way for them to kind of make it so that, you know, hey, I want less buoyancy, weight blocks. I want more buoyancy, foam blocks. And we could build things to be whatever we want. Because at the end of the day, that's ideal, is the ability to kind of build our vehicles how we want them. You know, so I'm a big advocate for something like a foam block. You see how much mass I have just sitting in the back here? So one of the things I did here was, you see where I put these weight blocks? I'm going to essentially cram these in the back here. And so this is part of the ballasting process. As I add superstructure, as I add engines, I need to keep changing ballast. And I kind of enjoy doing that. Some people don't, but I enjoy it. I enjoy um, kind of fixing it, and it teaches me a lot about how to set it up, and I get better at this. Any, anything I can do to get better at the game, I enjoy. It's a good learning experience. And I also want to get the, get the ballast, get the mass as low as I can get it, so... So one thought is, let's do this instead. Let's come over here. I don't want anything really in the bow. So see where it, it de-squares? Let's go to there, I think. De-squares, I know, is not a word. but um, I'll say it's a word. All right, so see, we're just coming into our... These are fuel tanks, I believe. Yep, fuel tanks. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab weight blocks. Right there. All right, that's going to hopefully drag that center of gravity down. I'm, I'm keeping looking at my center of gravity node. So what I can theoretically do is, if need be, again, it's premature to talk about doing any sort of glitch, but theoretically I can keep adding weight to drag this down, 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 and then I can delete the weight, or I can add negative weight up high and try to essentially keep that center of gravity low. So I have to kind of play with it and see where we're at. But I'm going to start getting rid of these. Um, these are kind of productive at the moment. I also cut my fuel by a considerable amount. That really that took out some of the um, took out some of the mass in the front. So it's a little bit early to make sure I'm getting this balanced correctly, but it's not too much. See how, see how it's sitting way too high now? I need that ballast in order to keep the ship 
operating properly, which is fine. It looks bad now, but again, this is a work in progress. So what we're going to do here is now I, I've shrunk these water tanks. I really want water ballast. It really helps with things like you want to put a container on there. You can pump out water ballast. It allows you to be a little bit more dynamic with. So fresh water is going to be my diesel tanks and the um, salts just going to be my ballast tanks. So now I put in a bunch of ballast water in the stern. All right, good. So that it doesn't look good, but it is good. That's uh, working in the right direction. Generally, because of the lack of buoyancy in the bow, you have to add a ton of mass to the stern to get it to work in game well. And so it's not the end of the world. It's just something I need to be cognizant of. I'm trying to see where I can go down here. So let's start cutting. And I want to keep adding some weight to the stern here so like this is all in the keel here so i'm going to essentially start cutting out my keel and putting in weight in there and so cutting keel here is in just making as much space as i can for so we're starting to see we're starting to hit weight block there and so this is just going to get me Get me there, and then I can add some more. Um, this is typically, especially a larger ship like this, it, you know, you have a uh, you have a lot more buoyancy than you generally need, and so it tends to start getting into the weight territory of adding mass to try to balance things up. You know, of course, it would be great. You know, we keep seeing people thinking they're going to change at some point, or hoping they'll change buoyancy or drag in game they're not one i think a lot of people when they talk about airplane stuff i tend to get a little bit <laughs> that's my area of expertise and you hear some people talk authoritatively about it and it's like that's not really how aerodynamics works but um you know it's like any big physics change i seriously doubt they do at this point you know imagine you know people are like well it'll make the game better well it will break every build you've ever made and so for some people that might be fine. But for those of us who put hundreds or even thousands of hours in specific builds, if you tell me that all my builds stop working tomorrow, I'm going to be annoyed. I'm really going to be annoyed. And a lot of people are going to be annoyed. And what you've done is you've essentially, you're going to alienate every casual player. And I don't mean casual player as a pejorative. I mean casual player as somebody who does not have a lot of time to play who can come in and play for a little bit. And so they might have one build that they're really proud of, that they worked a lot of, a long time on. And you break that build in that person. Imagine how discouraging that is. And so that's why I seriously doubt they would do a big physics change like that. Is you would just you would absolutely destroy people's hard work. You would make everything in the workshop not work. And like a bunch of my old builds, people have said, hey, hey, man, uh, you know, are you going to update this build? And I'm like, no, you know, I, I'm not in love with that build anymore. I don't want to make, I don't want to work on that anymore. And, you know, so you imagine something that somebody's using of yours in the workshop. And if they have to completely rebuild it, they're not going to rebuild it. They're just going to say, well, man, I, I don't want to work on that anymore. And, you know, they're going to completely break so much by doing that. They're not going to do it. The devs are not going to do that. I think they're a lot smarter than that to completely destroy, essentially destroy a large part of the game by changing something that really, you know, you know, I've talked about this before that essentially, you know, don't think of this as Earth. I think a lot of people get hung up on this, that the physics isn't exactly like it is on Earth. Well, guess what? You know, you look at the ankles of our of our characters, right? They're obviously not human. And so it's like, it was kind of like with Kerbal Space Program is, you know, it's the planet of Kerbin. It's not Earth. And so gravity is different. You know, gravity is less. And the, the benefit of that from a gaming perspective is certain things that are not really possible on Earth, like, you know, SSTOs, single stage to orbits, are incredibly difficult and probably impossible on Earth. Or, impossible is not the right word. Impractical on Earth. They're just not practical at all. And so the likelihood of, of having SSTOs on Earth is very slim, I would say, because of the impracticalities. I'm not going into orbital mechanics and Delta V and all that, but, you know, you can watch some of my Kerbal videos. I'm going to do some tutorials in Kerbal. You'll see it there. But, you know, the impracticality of that is not going to happen. 
you know, you know, because of the Earth. And so by making Kerbal so that, you know what, you're, you're not human, you're Kerbins, or you're Kerbals, and you live on Kerbin instead of the Earth, well, guess what? Now the impossible is possible because the gravity well is different, you know, and so it makes it so that you can do some impossible things. And the same thing is true here is, would it be great if this had a one-to-one -one if this had a one-to-one -one relationship for buoyancy and buoyancy was 100% perfect in game, oh yeah, I would love it because I could easily just look things up and it would work. But the likelihood that that happens is pretty slim. You know, they're not going to make huge buoyancy changes. You know, it'd be nice if I could get this to be perfect. Um, it's just, it's unlikely. All right, so this is floating a little bit better. Now, the rolling I'm not concerned with. This is going to get a... This is going to get a weight stability system put in there as well. I will probably, I'm going to work with the glitch, see if I can't get that to work the way I want it. I want to be able to add a ton of mass and then put in probably the glitch to get it perfect. You know, again, the glitch gives us the gift of being able to add buoyancy where we want it, take it away where we don't with weight blocks. And it allows us to come up with more realistic operations here. What is this? That is floor in here. Okay. All right, so I'm just kind of talking to myself as I go through this here. And, you know, so that's kind of my thoughts on the game and, and, you know, you know, the game not having perfect buoyancy and air resistance and all that is like, I get it. It would be nice to have it, you know, it'd be nice to just have predictability with that because we already know, or some of us know what it's like on Earth. But, um, you know, there are ways we can get around it in game to make it better. And you can either complain about it or you can play. And I just choose to play. You know, complaining about it's not worth my time. You know, you can, you can, you know, of course it it is productive to put in some requests from the devs. But like I said, a lot of it I doubt they're going to make big changes. You know, it's it's too late in the game to be making big changes. You know, we know what it is. It's the predictability of it. And often, especially in engineering, predictability is, you know, to predictably understand how something's going to operate is better often than to um, have it be perfect, you know. Like in this game, I'd rather know what I have to do to make a, a ship work than to have to completely rethink it and do it over again. All right, so there, I've added a bit, bunch of mass. We're at 36, we're at 48 now, so I've almost added 10,000 mass. All right, perfect. So see how this is sitting nice? It's a little bit stern heavy, but I have full water ballast. I'll have to, so the, the water ballast, I want to be full when the fuel tanks are empty. And so I need that. I need the aft to sit a little bit lower. You know, if we had a center of buoyancy, I kind of have to figure it out on my own. So that is, that's fuel. Fuel's at, so we still have, oh yeah, it'd be 32,000 liters. That's plenty. This is, and we have 26,000 liters of water on either side. So that, that's that's good for me. All right, so this is sitting, um, let's see, where is it sitting? So, you, you know, you can tell it's definitely sitting too low. Let's try something here. Let's do the glitch. I know some people are opposed to it, but whatever, man. A lot of people have been very terrified that they're going to take away this, or that, you know, if we talk about it, they're going to take it away. I find that highly unlikely. Could they? Sure. Is it a smart business decision for them to do this? Absolutely not. You know, you have people who are fixing something that's innately not perfect with the game and it's not hurting anybody. You know, if it was a multiplayer game and it is to a certain extent, but if it was a competitive multiplayer shooter like, say, Escape from Tarkov and you're doing something that advantages you, that's cheating. This is not cheating. You know, you're playing a single-player game by yourself. You know, even uploading to the workshop is not cheating. You know, and also people can build things like airships and really super cool things like hovercrafts. They can build fantasy galleons that float in the sky. And that's a fantastic positive thing. So, you know, by doing a glitch, it's like, 
it lets people build amazing things. And in a building game, that's what's most important. All right, so this is with the glitch in. And as you can tell, that's way too much buoyancy. But I have added all this weight down here at the bottom. So it tends to sit up straight. I also have something with some negative mass up high. That's going to help it um, stay stable more like a real ship. Now, you can see it's sitting up way too high. That just means that the number I put in there is too high. But you'll notice this is sitting much better. It will still rock and roll. It will still act appropriately. You see it's still sitting towards the stern. That is perfectly fine because I have water ballast back there that will be reduced when I have full fuel load, which I do. So this is actually pretty good. So I will go back in here. I'll get a new number, and I'll try out that number. All right, so I've reduced it by about a third. As you can see, we're getting closer to that uh, desired water line that I want. I keep moving the water line up because that's pretty much where it actually should be. It should be just around the bulb uh, where the bulb cuts in there. So that's actually pretty good because as the wave is going to trough right here, and then the bulb um, should be right there. So that's actually working pretty well. Again, I, I do want it sitting towards the stern a little bit. So I'm going to try another number, and we'll test that one out. All right, so I think for now we found our number. As I add more mass, I add more things in here, that's going to change a little bit. So right now, as you can see, we're stern heavy. That's fine. Again, my ballast tanks are full of water. They have 26,000 liters of water per side. My Both my fuel tanks are full at, uh, was it 16,000? 16,000 liters per side. And so when I launch this ship once it's you know done, it's going to have a reduced water load in there. As the fuel burns, the water will automatically intake to maintain that. So let's uh, play with the water ballast just a little bit, and we'll try to get this kind of sitting pretty. As I add more things, that number is probably going to have to change. But I really like this this glitch is just an ability to get things correct. you know. And so that's, that's the whole thing. So let's go ahead and let's do, well, I don't know, 50% water ballast on each side. I do this, I kind of do a cut in half method. So I'd cut that in half if... If that's not enough water, I'd go to about here. If it is too much water still, I'd go to here. And then if I know, okay, well, that's too little water now, I know it's somewhere between here and here, and I can fine-tune in there. So it's just kind of a fine-tuning method. All right, and so why am I doing this early? I highly recommend get your ship balanced as you go. Because, you know, you put a bunch of stuff in you really want, you really need in-game, you really like, and it doesn't, and the ship doesn't behave properly, you're going to wish you were balancing it as you were going. Okay, so next thing I want to do, I, I, these types of big ships, especially because I'm going to be putting something like a helicopter on there, there's going to be a boat on here, there's going to be, maybe I'll put a container on the back at some point. You know, there's a bunch of situations where I need an active stability system, so I'm going to put in an active stability system. Uh, where is going to be a question? So, all right. So, see, this is the wall right here. So, this is actually pretty. This is pretty perfect. I think it's going to go here. So, I'm going to punch it in here. Let's go. So, I'm going to punch it in here. The issue is where the walls get kind of uh, hokey here. But this is going to be an invisible area or a non-visible area where nobody's going to really see it. It's not going to be invisible, but it's going to be here. And then this, actually, I can cut these out. These, This is just air ballast in here. This is not going to have any sort of, you know, there's no real, uh, you know, I was thinking at first I'd put fluid in here, but I'm definitely not going to. I, I always forget that, that the, the bow really can't take. The bow needs air. That's just the short and simple. The bow needs a bunch of air ballast. That's just how the game kind of works. All right, so here is going to be where my active stability weight is, and the reason is that's where the center of gravity is there. I kind of, I should put it back one. I'm, I'm afraid of cutting my fuel and water volume down, but I really don't think I need to care that much about it. I'm being a little bit over picky about it. I think we'll be all right if I put in right here. Yeah, I think that'll be fine. What's under here? Uh, the ocean. Okay. That's what I thought was under there. Let's see. Is this going to be a flat wall? So this, I uh, see this doesn't have a flat wall either, but it's more centrally centralized. So let's, let's do that. Okay. And this is pretty much right at the center of gravity. So this will actually work out pretty well. 
All right, so what I'm going to do in here is put in the active stability weight. So this is going to be able to move back and forth. And I'm just going to grab the number off Triton. It just makes it a lot easier. All right, and so I'm doing this. I'm going to control it from top and bottom just so it's more stable. I don't need to control it from the top and the bottom, but I, I'm going to do it just for stability's sake. All right, so I need some linear track bases here. And these are going to go, I forget which direction to put them, but I, you know, it's just an inversion if I need to. So I'm going to have them go to... Oh, that's the right. I don't need to cut there. I want to put it right on top like I had it. So I'm going to make sure the arrows are all pointing the same direction. Like so. All right, good. And now this is going to just get a, it's going to be a hulking, hulking weight here. I'm going to merge this together. And then oh, there's going to be a bunch of weight blocks to get us um, an active stability system. So this will move, this will help with both um, waves they actually have some of these in real life and it will also help with if i put something like a container on deck that will help that so this will move back and forth uh, i'm going to do this really quick i want to see how heavy this is so up uh, no go forward all the way there we go so that's um 46 543 And that is, so we're currently, so that's about a thousand weight we put on there. So it's going to be bigger than that. So that's adding a thousand. So I think I'm going to, that's going to be my last section there. So that's how big the weight is, as you can see. So I'll go back and forth. And then I'm going to, I'm going to notch it for in here. So this will be notched just so that fits in that, into that little cavity there. So that's notch, notch. All right, that fits in this notch there. And then after two up, it needs another notch. Yeah, I don't have to do this, but I kind of like that. I screwed this up already. So the top one needs to be a single. Down to cut. Down to cut to one. Okay, so that's going to actually touch up against the wall and fit there on either side. What are we up to mass-wise? So that's about 2,000, a little less than 2,000. What is that, 1,500 mass, something like that. All right, good. So that's that's good. That's what I want, and that's gonna slide back and forth based on tilt sensors, and that will keep me stable, port starboard. Uh, again, this is really good for if you're doing things like if you're doing like a container ship. This is really helpful. You know, if people ask how my crane on Triton was so stable. This is how is by putting in a big stability weight like this. As you're picking up something with a crane, this weight is counterbalancing it. So you'll actually see counterbalances on real cranes. And so what I need to do before I did that was a mistake, but uh, let's see. So I need to count essentially how many blocks to this notch in here. And so let's see, let's do a pinky and count. So that is going to be nine. All right, so I essentially only want this to move nine blocks left, right. So I need this to only move nine blocks. I don't need to move any further than that. All, all it's going to do is push up against the wall and cause me problems or just be useless. So that's as far as it needs to move. It will still reach the full length of the walls. And I come in here and cut that like so. All right, and that's all we need movement-wise there. And I can put in regular blocks here. I could add some more weight on the belly here but I'm not going to. All right, so that weight will be active and slide back and forth, and that will help give me a nice active stability system. Again, I'm going to have to fix what I just did with ballasting a little bit, but um, I'm going to have to keep doing that. The whole build is uh, continually work on, working on ballasting. As I add weight, I need to reduce 
um, some of that ballast weight. That's why it's nice to put on all those weight blocks. As I add in all my bridge stuff, that's very high up. So uh, that is going to mean that I would need to add a bunch of mass down here. As I add something low, I could probably delete out some weight. So that's all kind of goes in consideration. All right, so let's get this, this weight in there. You saw how the water was at 50%. We're sitting nice, nicely now. So it doesn't matter where the tilt sensor is. It's, it's a global thing. So if I can not be upside down the whole freaking time. Um, I'm going to try to find a spot for the tilt sensor. Probably, I don't know, stick it right here. For now, at least. It doesn't need to be high. It doesn't need to be low. It's going to be a global thing. It works off the horizon. All right, so that's in there. Let's go ahead and save this. I'm going to pull in Triton. Triton has the weight already. So Triton was the home ship for last career build series. If you didn't see that, that this was that home ship, as you can see, based off another Damon ship. And so what I'm looking for here is that has a large stability weight in here, right here. And I need this. So that's it right here, counterweight right there. And so especially as I'm working my cranes, the further out you reach the crane, the greater the effect of the mass. So you can have a tiny little mass, but if you're reaching a long way, you have a long lever arm, it, it gives you a lot of torque. It gives you a lot of torque. And so, um, you know, you want to counteract that. It's actually the first microcontroller in this. All right, let's get just. I'm just gonna stick it down here in the engine room. I'm trying to get in the habit of not having the microcontrollers all over the exterior. That way, when I want to use it in game, it's not ugly. Especially I'm trying to take screenshots and there's a ton of crap all over it. It's kind of gross. All right, so here's the tilt sensor. Goes to the tilt sensor, and then I didn't check which way these are going. But these can all be just interjoined like that. And let's, I'll go in here. You can see what how this works. It's a PID, of course it is. Why wouldn't it be a PID? So you have, I want a zero. So I want zero tilt, tilt sensor. Uh, P value is eight. Um, D value, 2,500. And an I of quad zero, 10. Uh, it's in. It uh, is not inverted, but it can be inverted. I left the inversion in there, so instead of flipping the sliders around, all I have to do is invert it. So let's go ahead, and this shall either tip over or sit very nice. It's a little bit crooked. I don't know why. That's uh, is it input electricity. On? It is okay. So we can actually fly into that compartment and see what it's doing here. So here's the weight. So I think it's backwards. Let's see the weight is all the way to starboard, pretty much. See how it's continual all the way over to starboard? This is backwards. So see how it's tipping starboard? It should be going to, I'm sorry, it's going to port. It should be going to starboard. So a very simple fix here. I could flip all of those around, but I'd have to flip four of them around. I'd rather just go zing like that. And then that's just going to invert it. I could flip the tilt sensor around either way, but um, so also because the ship is asymmetrical, you know, you see like this, the superstructure is asymmetrical. That will help with fixing some of that asymmetry on there. So this should be going all pretty much all the way to. Um, starboard. I'm just trying to see it. It's sitting there. So it's not all the way to starboard, I don't think. Is it? Yeah, I see it's not all the way there. Alright. Maybe stuck in the hull. So I don't know if that's currently working. It's hard for me to tell how tipped it is. What I can do, though, is I can come in here and find the tilt sensor. Yeah, see, we're we're pretty minorly tilted, but it should be fixing that. So I might have to fix the p-value on this to get that to function. It's not moving enough, um, so I'm going to have to do that. So let's go ahead and get in there. 
Let's fix it. So I could pretty much do this pretty quickly. Let's go. We do a number input, p value, logic, and then I just want to take manual control of p value. Grab a keypad. I kind of want to know what the. I'm going to stand on deck and do it. Yeah, I think I'm going to stand on deck and do it here. And so this will get plugged in there for p-value, and then I want to dial. And then I'll plug this in the tilt sensor to read that off for me. That way I can just do it from out here. So right now it's going to be at zero. That's not going to do anything. And so eight was where it was at. Eight is not enough. So it was at eight. And so you see it's um, 002. Let's try to get that fixed. So let's go to double it, 16. So see, it's a little bit lower. Uh, let's do an, an insane number. That's actually not all that insane. I don't want it overly active. I don't want it moving around too much. Each ship is going to need its own setting, you know, but it's it helps to start off with another build. So I'm trying to make sure it's not just rocking and rolling all day long. I'm going to go down there and look at it, see if it's if it's like constantly back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. As long as it's not being overly active, I'm, I'll be happy with it. Like, see, it's it's actually yeah, it's 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 gently moving, but it's not insanity. You can tell it's kind of just working with the waves. It's not being nuts. If it was back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back, back and forth, that would be an issue. But you can see it's behaving itself. And that's because the tilt sensor numbers are so small. So that weighs about 2,000. The one on Triton is much heavier. And that's because it, it, it does a lot of cargo container loading. So you see that number's pretty good, actually. It's not too bad. 100. Let's try a nuts number. I'm trying to get this to misbehave a little bit. So see, that's going both sides. That's really zipping back and forth now. Let's try 50. All right, so see, it's, it's kind of going nuts a little bit now. That's probably because of the 100, it was uh, misbehaving. I'm going to start playing with it again, see if I can't get it to simmer down. It's going to need to simmer down from... So see it's settling now. So by reducing the number, it's starting to settle now. That's settled pretty well. Let's see where we're at. Yeah, it's, it likes that. That's not too bad. That's giving me three decimal places of accuracy. That's pretty good. That's just with a one. The problem is it's not going to want to go to the extremes, but we'll have to see what I throw at it and see how that how it likes it and how it behaves. All right, so let's uh, continue doing a little bit of work here. So that's good. So I'm just going to stick a one in there for now. Then, as need be, I'll change it. So. Oh, I didn't mean to spawn it again. But, oh, well. So, we'll, we'll start with a 1, and then, uh, you know, it's going to have to probably be tuned a little later anyway. So. All right, so let's get in here. I want to do some more railing work, just kind of busy work. I'd like to really get working on this boat, too. It's kind of a nice little distraction to do something different. What's that? That is 21. So we're talking 11. That is... That's 11, so we're talking 6.
Sometimes I like a lot of I like to have a lot of railing pieces, sometimes I don't. Yeah, it's pretty good there. That doesn't seem excessive to me. And a 16, that's an even number. The 10, to, if I'm going to do an even number, I'll go odd, up, odd through. So it'll be 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. That's kind of the methodology I use on that. It has white railings on that one. It's a little bit bland, I think, but I'll have to decide what I want to do. Is this railing the same? I don't think it is. It certainly isn't. Okay. Nice thing is you can't see the port in the star of the ship anyway. It's a little lay symmetry. is not a big deal. 26. That's an even number, so we'll say, say every four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. I count which one I'm counting from right there. Okay, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then what is it? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right, so that's pretty good there. A little one's a little bit longer than the others, but it's not a big deal. You know what I'll actually do? I'll come from the center. I'll be really annoying. No, I, I'll just do it like this. <laughs> I'll try not to be really annoying. All right, let's just grab this. You know, I kind of get on these detail paths, kind of um, fads where I want to really do some detailing. That's looking good. What's the distance? I'm just going to work. keep working on some railings. Just a little bit of kind of busy work. Nine, five. Twenty-two, okay. Uh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. That is twenty. Okay. One, two, three, four. Four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That one gets one here. That's probably it there. These are the same, so that'll be. Our It'd be convenient to not have to do that. Is that 10? Seven. All right, let's do the top section, then I can just bang them all in. These are, are asymmetrical. A lot of asymmetry on the ship, which I love, but it is a, it can be a pain. Just a lot more work to have to build to make things work. How did I just delete something I didn't want to? Yeah, there's not really enough railing there to do it. So what I tend to do if I get in this situation is I will count out and do this to kind of fix that. And then I actually could have done symmetry on this one, but it's not a big deal. Just do that. So it's that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight.
Yeah, it's eyeballing a bunch of the stuff. What are you? You are 19. Yeah, because I think everything's chopped that needs to be chopped except here. Just notice this one. 14. Okay. And so I think we've chopped the railings where they need to go. Let's go start just popping these suckers in. So for all these midsections here. Alright, good. Then I'm gonna fix these. And then I should be able to do a bunch of dragging to get this done. Alright, so this should be easy to finish it up now. So I should be able to do a bunch of dragging like so. I don't think that's that's not symmetrical anyway. Curious what the cost of this is going to be so far. It's going to be a way, is, you know, this, the other thing that I like to do in this, and I was talking about, you know, I've talked before about how, like, I like a game where you make up your own missions, you make up your own um, adventures, essentially. And so one of the things for me is, like, this is going to be a career build series ship. And so I want to go and make a bunch of money because I'm making this ship, you know? So this gives me a reason, some motivation like, you know, oh, well, why do I need a ton of money? Oh, you need a ton of money because you wanna go use the home ship. And you wanna be able to launch that in game. And so that kind of is a motivation to go get working on something like that. And so that's why I tend to do something like this is I wanna get that in game. And so it's kind of pushing me to, uh, hey, go work on this so you can get that, get that into the series, you know? And so it, it is, you know, I don't, you know, people who talk about getting bored in the game, it's, I understand it, but for me, I don't get bored because it's like, oh, well, I'll, uh, you know, I want a home ship in there, and because I want a home ship in there, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to go make some money so I can have it, you know. And so I don't get it bored, let's put it that way. Because I tend to always have like some long-term goals, some short-term goals, like, you know, the uh, tugboat is done and is working well, and then, you know, kind of have the next ship all ready to go, or inspired to go, and then, okay, well, for the new ship, I need money, and so it gives me a reason to go out and earn some money in-game. Seven... That gives me a lot of reason to go do things is the need for that money. Same thing in real life. You know, you, you know, I'd often get in stretches of work where I'm kind of burned out and you're like, Hey, you know what? You're going to get yourself a treat when you're done. You're going to go buy this thing. And that's going to, you know, like motorcycle season coming up. I want a new motorcycle or something. And it's like, Oh, you can go get that new motorcycle. And that will, um, you know, is a kind of a treat for working hard. And so same thing in game is, you know, give you some motivation to go, do some fuel missions or to go grind out some other missions is because you want the reward of doing it. 
All right, so the railing's are really looking nice now. That's adding some good detail on there. Let's do a walk around. All right, so we have our stability weight in. That's nice. That's going to take care of some issues. Really love the flow of the ship. This flows really well. It's cool. The asymmetry is cool. Like, okay, you want to go up top? You know, it's not perfectly symmetrical. You can go on this side. Nope, you have to go on the starboard side. Go on the starboard side. Go up the ladder, you know. And up here, you know, somebody was saying, no, you should make it so you can get under that. Yeah, it, it can get under that. But again, this is how it is in, in real life is you have to crawl under that. You know, it's not, the stacks will go right here on one side. I might do symmetrical stacks. I doubt it, though. I'll probably do a single there. I kind of like the notion of that little bit of asymmetry. The door needs to go here. So here's the lifeboat. It's going to have a davit. What I'll probably do is put a davit crane right here. That's probably what I'm going to do so I can go full width on this. What I'll do is I'll also grab, get a, a size on this. Come in here. Yep, you don't hit your head going up there. Let's go up to the bridge or the wheelhouse. Yep, wheelhouse looks good. Good visibility here. I can see over here for docking. Come back here, see over there. Maybe operate the crane. Look over at the davit. I don't want to go down a level, kind of just walk over here, and then I didn't never uh, deleted the blocks out there, but you could walk down that staircase. We have the new higher area here. So I'm going to uh, try to decide what I want to do for that. That's all white in the real one, but the white in game is just looks unfinished. Like, this is white, it looks unfinished. I like this. This is kind of cool being able to come up here. So I'm really digging on this. This is this is nice. So I think let's see where we at time was. We're we're pretty good on this video. I think I'll work on the might work on that uh, little boat here a little bit. I think that'll be fun. So let's check. Uh, I want to check on. I'm not. Am I gonna get a price in this? Yeah, so this is 91,000. That's about what I was expecting. The home ship's like 300 grand to launch. Of course, this has no, this doesn't, this has engines in it, but they're not plumbed up. A lot of the parts aren't here. So, but I think this is fun. So I think we'll probably take a little break off of this. Uh, go work on some other stuff. You know, this series is just going to be this ship. So you'll see this on this series. But, um, you know, career build series, you know, I'm going to uh, get back into that some and, uh, a little bit of a break on the ship, but I'm really enjoying the ship. It's it's really coming along nicely, and it's uh, progressing, you know, really nicely. And so I think this is this is a good goal. It's 91,000. This is currently only a little bit more than double what the tugboat cost. Put that in perspective. But this is a lot of fun. I've been enjoying building this, and this is a goal. This is how I don't get bored in the game. I don't get bored because I'm like, oh. I want a home ship, and I want to be able to afford it, and I need to go into the career build series, and I need to go do some oil trading to do that, or I need to go sell some coal, or I need to do some missions, and it gets me motivated to go out there and do it. And so um, that's kind of my motivation strategy. So I hope you guys enjoy watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.